This is 7 National News making headlines. Young businessmen and women honoured at the Young Entrepreneurs Competition 2011. UAE product demand to rise. And firefighters continue to battle Ibiza fire. Winners of this year's Young Entrepreneurs Competition were honoured today at a ceremony in the presence of His Highness Sheikh Mansour bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. According to organisers, the annual competition gained so much attention from the youth and saw many innovative business ideas presented. The event aimed to encourage and empower the young businessmen and women of the future to start up on their own and contribute to UAE's economy. His Highness Sheikh Mansour bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum graced the awarding ceremony for the winners of the Young Entrepreneurs Competition this year. His Highness congratulated the 10 outstanding business ideas. According to the organizers, this year's event proved to be tougher than the previous years. Out of the 2,000 applications received, only 800 were shortlisted. In general, there was like main five criteria, which are the operations. Uh, second is financially. Uh, how they planned it financially. The third one is the marketing. Fourth one is uh, the team, how they formed their team and partners. And the fifth is how unique or environmental or something special about the project. For many of these young people, it is more than just winning. They say they are taking away so much more from the experience. It feels great to get the second place because uh, uh, it's very special out of uh, 800 uh, I think 800 shops, you win, you are between those top 10, and uh, I mean top 3. So it feels great to be the, uh, one, of, one of the special uh, projects. During the five days, we managed to uh, uh, sell uh, almost 700 burger and 700 gal with 100% uh, revenue. And uh, it encourages us, like, uh, beside uh, the um, fun part of being part of participating in this competition, uh, we actually made profit. I'm really happy that we won today. It was uh, really good. It was a huge achievement. And I'm happy that it, it's well deserved. Meanwhile, many of those who already won in the previous years decided to give it a try for the second time. Our project is called Fantakino. Uh, we made um, slippers, uh, new design slippers. Uh, it's uh, just for the beach. Um, it's a new idea and it's, uh, for the second time now uh, we are uh, participating in, uh, in uh, YEC. Um, so Alhamdulillah for everything. What we do is we take new and gently used clothes and we sell them at a lower price and they're mostly brand names so people that wouldn't usually have the opportunity to buy designers or high-end apparel um, can now afford it at my store. So it's an honor to win for the second time and it's extremely motivating and I'm very, very proud to be a young entrepreneur and to, to at least, even if I didn't win, at least I tried. While only 10 brought home the awards, everyone who participated in the program and competed are winners in their own right. At such a young age and in these challenging times, they say being able to come up with a business idea and making it a success is already an important achievement. Khadija Sali, 7 National News. UAE product demand from aluminium and copper to plastics, carpets and textiles is set to rise according to a study released by the Dubai Chamber of Commerce and Industry. The study focused on the Japanese earthquake and its economic cost, as well as the opportunities and challenges. It noted that the Middle East will have a positive impact from reconstruction efforts. UAE products like copper, aluminium and textiles will most likely be imported to Japan to help rebuild areas. The report also shows that the UAE's gas is most likely to substitute for Japan's shortfall of nuclear power as it already imports large quantities as well as oil imports. It added that if Japan's oil exports rise, it will positively impact economies. On Friday, the community gathered at Zabil Park for Yalla Walk, the world campaign. The initiative is under the patronage of Her Highness Princess Haya bint Al Hussein, wife of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai. In unity with the worldwide fight against hunger and poverty, Dubai municipality spearheaded the launch that will see a series of initiatives throughout the year to raise more awareness and help the less fortunate. Khadija Sali has this report. 
On a warm Friday, the community gathered at Zabil Park for Yala Walk the World in participation with a global advocacy event to end child hunger. Various government and private organizations showed support in raising awareness and funds. Among them is the Dubai Municipality. Walk the World is one of our, our uh, contribution to the community and to the world, as you understand from this event. And the Municipality is providing the services for that kind of activities. The Municipality is providing around 33 track around Dubai, and there are around 33 kilometers. And this is one of the events that we are actually uh, anticipating in and participating in uh, very strongly. The community comprised of people from various sectors, families, children, and those with special needs who all walked for the hungry. The campaign annually takes place across 24 time zones in one day. Launched eight years ago, the program has mobilized over 2 million participants and fed over 200,000 children. It is hoped that with this event in the UAE, the drive will garner even more attention. Everybody comes and uh, with very small amount, 50 dirham, just to show their solidarity. But, but from raising awareness is to raise awareness of people who can contribute, whether individual, corporates or governments, to contribute towards funding projects which help improve the living condition of the people in, uh, in uh, developing countries. Dubai and the UAE's continuous efforts to help those in need, whether locally or internationally, are highly appreciated by humanitarian organizations. In fact, it is now a hub for charity, which they hope will push much greater support forward. The culture and, and the Arabian culture and the UAE culture is a culture of giving. And that's why we're opening an office here to be actually to, to get donations from the rich people. And the support has been immense. Though globally it is a one-day yearly event, Numerous activities will be carried out across Dubai throughout the year to continue raising awareness. And judging from the initial turnout, many more are willing to help and do their share. If I donate 50 dirhams, for me it's nothing. For them, they can get food, water. I want to help hungry children so that they can go to school and play. We are here to support the kids, support the uh, children who need help. Many of them are starving in the world today because of not enough food and they are living in such bad conditions. So I want to do something to help them and I even want to make the world a better place. Yellow Walk the World is more than just an initiative. It is an urgent call from the poor and the hungry across the globe. And while the initial response has been great, authorities hope to attract more members of the community to participate in alleviating the sufferings of the less fortunate, beginning with 50 dirhams. Khadija Sali, 7 National News. Emiratis are to receive a 7% salary increase based on their outstanding performance under the recently announced increment for Dubai government employees, while expats will receive a 5% hike. Officials at the HR department of the Dubai government said that the increment will be given on basic salary and that Emiratis, whose performance just meets the expectations, will see an increase of 3% of their basic salary. The increment will be given to 42 departments in the government and only those on duty will qualify. Zayed University and the Dubai Airport Free Zone have signed a Memorandum of Understanding to further promote cooperation in employment, internship and training. University students will get priority access to both temporary and permanent positions within the Airport Free Zone as well as job shadowing and mentor program opportunities. Students and professors will also take part in developmental projects such as surveys, management studies and research. A spokesperson from Zayed University stated that the MOU signifies a great opportunity to boost their efforts towards producing job-ready graduates. Suzanne al Hubi has become the first Arab woman to ever conquer Mount Everest. As part of a four-person team, the Palestinian-born UAE-based woman reached the 8,848 peak after 51 days. To date, only 100 women have reached the top. al Hubi hit the record books back in 2003 when she became the first Arab woman to reach the base camp on Mount Everest, scale Europe's highest peak, Mount Elbrus, and Africa's Kilimanjaro. She has successfully reached the summit of the highest mountains on five of the world's seven continents. 
Commenting on her achievement, Al Hobi said that she will never forget the moment when her dream became a reality and wants to share the triumph with the Arab world, especially those women who contribute to peace and stability in the region. School hours are to be shortened by up to 80 minutes next month as the mercury rises according to a local paper. Officials from the Sharjah Educational Zone said they decided to take action after a survey was carried out. School will now have 45 minute lessons and five classes per day instead of seven to eight 50 minute classes. Looking abroad now, firefighters on the Spanish island of Ibiza entered a third day of battle on Friday against a fire that is considered to be the island's biggest one to date. Their efforts to put out forest fires in Morna Mountain were complicated by a wind shift that fanned the flames further. Around 400 people have been working for days to extinguish the fire, which has forced the evacuation of more than 100 homes, affecting around 250 people. The Spanish Defence Ministry has said it would be deploying more emergency military units to the area. The fire, which started on Wednesday afternoon, has already destroyed over 2,000 hectares of pine forest in Ibiza's north. An international atomic agency fact-finding team visited the Fukushima plant at the heart of Japan's ongoing crisis as part of its investigation into the cause of the disaster. The team, led by Mike Waitman, chief inspector of nuclear installations in Britain, viewed the destruction at the Daiichi plant and talked with TEPCO staff as to how the plant was damaged. TEPCO said on Thursday that another 36 tonnes of radioactive water had leaked from a waste disposal building that has served as a temporary storage site. The, a the IAEA team will submit their preliminary report to the Japanese government on June 1 and then also prepare a report for the Ministerial Conference on Nuclear Safety, which is taking place at their headquarters in Vienna from June 20th. Up next, we have the day's business news, so stay with us.